Welcome everyone to the Great War mod. And yes, I will be playing this as well. And I will be playing as a pretty interesting country in the World War One mod, uh, which is Serbia. Serbia is pretty fun to play with. I've already done a few test runs with a few countries, and Serbia was the one that I had the most fun with, so I'm gonna do this again. And in case you don't know what this mod is, well, you've probably been living under a rock. <laughs> or you don't have Hearts of Iron and you don't follow what's been going on with Hearts of Iron lately. Essentially, this mod has been in development since the start of Hearts of Iron 4's life. And right now, it's finally been released in open beta. Open beta that's quite advanced in terms of its features. Let me lower my audio a little bit. It seems like it's going to be a little bit loud. And compared to a few of the other mods that have been out there, um, the development team seems to have had a strategy that was mostly revolving around actually getting a decently working, uh, decently working mod out before uh, anything weird happened. And essentially, what that meant was that they were able to release a mod that was well quite complete and it's quite playable. So it's pretty fun just setting up my troops. We're going to be at war with all these people that I'm setting up troops against, so yeah. Though at varying degrees of uh, varying times we're going to be at war with them, so I'm going to be shifting around as it happens. Now, there's quite a lot to take in from this national focus. Uh, Bulgaria and Serbia are the two countries outside of the majors, aka Austria, Germany, Italy, France, United Kingdom, Russia, USA, and Japan. That's the only, um, those are the five, the majors that get their own national focus tree, also the Ottoman Empire, I believe. And then the only other two that get it in this release uh, are uh, Bulgaria and Serbia, which is quite good because the game does end up uh, simulating, well, not really simulating, but at least having the uh, Balkan Wars quite effectively, which is, well, very fun to play with. I will start off, I believe, with political effort and then move on to industry. One nice feature that the mod does have is the fact that industry does have a time limit uh, to actually go for. Uh, you cannot go for these national focuses after a certain amount of time, which is great. Because normally you'd have countries that are able to rush for industry and then research slots, and that's, well, usually the best way to go about uh, actually getting your early national focuses. By restricting that, it does kind of make sure that smaller countries cannot develop quite as quickly. And then it also kind of makes some of the other national focuses more important, especially for uh, a mod that's kind of relying on some countries such as well, Bulgaria, getting their act on early and doing things. So we're going to start researching basic hand tools, mechanical computing for the research time decrease, and then going for mass charge. Now the land doctrines, as you can see, are different. There is one World War I land doctrine, the Cult of the Offensive, and then there's the normal doctrines that get unlocked after you get to the end of the Cult of the Offensive, which is uh, the War of Movement. After you finish getting the War of Movement, you can also uh, research the normal doctrines. I kind of like the system. Um, it ensures that uh, they don't have to do too much work with the World War One doctrines while also keeping it fairly interesting. Uh, as you can see, these are pretty well uh, designed in terms of their actual bonuses. There is a few things that get kind of broken and you'll uh, see uh, because I do have a bit of a way to break the system and make it so you can get some pretty overpowered stuff on the line, but oh well. Um, yeah, you may understand from the fact that I'm prioritizing artillery is that artillery is really important in the mod. Then I'm gonna get some rifles. Support equipment is not gonna be that easy because as Serbia, we don't really have that many resources. We only have timber and some steel. Uh, actually, it's called wood and not timber, but uh, oh well, I'm just gonna call it timber because it's what I'm used to. Uh, our factories are pretty much maxed out at the beginning. I'll build a new military factory in Serbia. And then I'm going to set my civilian factories to building trenches. Yeah, uh, trenches are a building that you can build in the strategic construction map. And, well, 
they're pretty cheap compared to land forts, but not really that much. I'm not really quite sure as to why they are so expensive, but uh, it's probably good that they're expensive because otherwise it will probably be a little bit ridiculous. So it's telling us that we have no template for the artillery, that's fine. We can probably get some of that steel production from the Austro-Hungarians because as you can see we are landlocked so it's going to be pretty hard to get some trade. We're going to need to go through Austro-Hungary. Which is going to be a problem, as you may imagine. Uh, if you know anything about World War One, you know that Austria, Hungary, and Serbia are not exactly the most friendly of countries in this time period. We do have 21 divisions to start, to start with, which is a fair amount, and we also have a pretty decent general, Radomir Putnik. We also have a few decent general. Oh, he's actually a field marshal. We also have a few decent generals, Stepa Stepanovich, especially with the commander and tricks and traits, but also Petar Bojovic, who has the Fortress Buster trait, which is quite useful in case you ever have to storm forts. Pavle Juricic uh, Sturm, also Juricic Sturm is also pretty good, and Zivojin, Zivojin Mišić, they're all pretty good. So Serbia does have a park of generals that's pretty good. Other than that, I think we ought to start, because there's really not... Uh, oh, this is the um, difficulty settings. They have actually added some difficulty settings that are custom. I'm just gonna go with not today. I don't really care too much for artificial difficulty increases in my games. Now, okay. Our first enemy is probably going to be the Ottoman Empire. Uh, they both have a national focus path to um, go and attack us, and we also have a national focus path to go and attack them. Now, the Albanian revolt. Um, the Albanians have refused to submit to the Turks. A new Albanian uprising has begun in Kosovo and the Northern Mountains. Ottoman government declared martial law and sent a military expedition. Now, in case you don't know, Kosovo is around here. And basically this part. It's called South Serbia Indus, which is, well, and also Morava. But, uh, yeah, today we call this area Kosovo. It's, well, you may know a little bit about it. And then Albania. Basically, in this time period, the Albanians were starting to revolt against the Ottomans. And this is going to start a border conflict in Albania. Uh, which means that the Ottomans are going to have to station troops there. And they're going to take damage periodically. Which is pretty good for us. Because the weaker the, Ottoman, the Ottomans are, the better it is for us. South Africa has become independent. So really, basically they are now a puppet of the United Kingdom instead of being literally part of the United Kingdom. Oh yeah, the game starts in 1910, in case you don't, uh, you haven't seen that already. So here's Montenegro, or uh, Montenegro, yeah, um, the little tiny friendly ally that we're going to have soon enough, hopefully. They're le led by Nicola I, we are led by Peter I, and the other... Uh, characters that we have to know in the Balkans are the Ottoman Empire, which by this time has been losing control over its Balkan territories in general, which is going to be pretty good for us, of course. Then, after I modify my government, I'm going to talk about Bulgaria a little bit. I should probably get a silent workhorse for some more political power gain. Bulgaria, they are led by Ferdinand I, who is actually a German, I believe, or maybe an Austrian, I'm not sure. And they are also pretty important in the Balkans because they are quite expens uh, expansionist uh, little fuckers. They really, really want Macedonia, which is this area over here. Macedonia is essentially quite similar to Bulgaria in terms of culture and blah blah blah, blah and they claim this area for themselves. They also claim this area, Thrace, uh, from the Ottomans and also from Greece, in case Greece decides to get into that area as well because it's also claimed by Greece. We're going to research the radio for some extra reinforcement rate. That's going to be very useful for us. And then we're also going to go for Heavy Industry 1 perhaps or maybe something else. Maybe Trenches? No. Heavy Industry 1 is going to be useful. And then we have Greece down here. Uh, Greece basically became independent from the Ottoman Empire much earlier than Bulgaria, Serbia, and Montenegro. 
but and also from also Romania. Um, Romania basically united in the latter half of the 19th century, whereas Greece became independent in 1820-ish, something like that. And essentially, Greece managed to secure itself quite the foothold in uh, the area, but they still have some areas they can, they can claim from the Ottomans. For example, Macedonia. This is what they call Macedonia. Macedonia is very weird. And then Thrace out here, also Constantinople, they still claim it. Uh, after all this time, obviously it was lost. Uh, okay, so basically the Greeks lost it in 1453 when the Ottoman Turks took it over, and then they're still claiming it now. I believe they also have, no, they actually have no claims in the western coast of Turkey, but in this time period, the Greeks also claimed areas around the western coast of Turkey, for example, I believe Izmir was a claim of Greece. They also claim a few islands in the Aegean, which are still disputed territory today, so there's quite a lot of stuff going on between Greece and the Ottomans. Now, we went for, we're going for the student movement because it's going to decrease our land doctrine research time by 5%, which is going to be excellent for us because we want to be ahead of our enemies in terms of actual um, army quality because our quantity is going to be very low. The main problem with Serbia is that their manpower is very low. And one thing about the Great War mod that um, is quite interesting is the fact that you need quite a lot of world tension to actually enact the later conscriptions. Uh, it's kind of representing the fact, I believe, that the mobilization in World War I didn't go quite as far as the mobilization in World War II in terms of the actual amount of troops that were called up and the extent to which conscription was carried out in terms of the... Um, old and uh, extremely young recruits. So uh, I kind of like that uh, since there isn't quite as much world tension gain in the mod compared to uh, st standard Hearts of Iron, you're essentially going to be more limited in terms of manpower, which is pretty useful. And to go with that, I'm going to uh, actually enlist Pavle Simovic or Simovic as a military theorist to get some less uh, doctrine research time because well, this is going to be very important to get ahead of our enemies in terms of that. So, the Korea and Japan annexation treaty. The Korean Empire, a Japanese puppet state since the assassination of Quinn Min in 19 1895, has just signed a treaty with the Japanese government that resulted in full annexation. So, at the start of the uh, game, Korea starts as a puppet of Japan, but now it got annexed. So, rip Korea. In general, Japan does have quite a few uh, ways to expand. Portugal becomes a republic. And China is quite interesting in the mod, however, it's still not quite as developed as it might maybe should be. Uh, of course, mod is still in very, very early beta, and China is a very, very complicated matter in this time period to actually explore, so it's quite simplistic. There's, on, there's only the uh, civil war between the Republicans and the Qin Dynasty, which is what we see right now. Heavy Industry 1 is going to increase some pretty useful stuff, such as production and factories max in a state. So I'm going to continue investing in resource, um, sorry, not resource production, production efficiency. And I'm going to go for the communication system to get some extra reinforcement break. Our divisions at the start, let me show you them. They're pretty uh, weak. They only have eight combat width. We also have infantry brigades, which are only four combat width. Then we can also produce armored car divisions which actually have infantry in them so I'm not going to be doing that I'm going to be switching around my cavalry division later on to have armored cars. We only have one cavalry division active in our army right now. If we go and find it the Konitsa, Konitska Divizia which means well horse division probably and I'm actually going to go and do some exercises because I want my troops to be fully trained and I also want some army experience as quickly as possible. So. Civil War in Mexico has started. There was quite a lot of very, very weird things happening in Mexico right now. I don't really know all that much about them, but uh, they are represented decently in the game, as far as I can tell. So, we have managed to get the student movement. We're going to go for the Reorganization Act, because it's going to uh, give us a military factory and a building slot, and also some political power. And then after that, I'm going to go and move to the right-hand side of the National Focus Tree, get some industry. And after I uh, hit the time cap, I'm going to go for some politics stuff and diplomacy stuff, which is going to be pretty exci exciting to actually go into. So you can read this if you want. It's been up for quite a while. 
and there's still a border conflict, as you can see in, in Albania. Uh, there is, I believe, a national focus for the Ottomans that is going to um, remove that. Definitely recognize Albanian sovereignty because that's going to uh, release Albania as a puppet, but they've gone for anti-Serbian policy instead of appeasement in the Balkans, which is, I believe, the historical option. So nothing too weird for them. We could go, yeah, we're going to go for some horse-drawn vehicles. Uh, the reason we're going to do that is because if we can get quite a bit of production of horse-drawn vehicles, we're going to be able to get uh, military hospitals on our divisions, which is going to be excellent for us because we definitely need to conserve as much manpower as possible. In terms of research, we could go for some industrial research. The Serbian State Railway. Or I could also go for a chief of the army. Getting the army offense is going to be excellent. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. I want to have my army pretty much ready to go as soon as possible. And we've already produced 410 field guns, which is excellent, actually. Uh, we've only got 20 infantry divisions, which means that we only need, I believe... 480 field guns because the support artillery is going to be 24 field guns so having 24 field guns per divisions means that 240 yeah 480 basically so once we get to 480 i'm gonna modify my divisions with artillery that's gonna be excellent for me because well uh yeah it's important to get artillery very very important to get artillery in this and this mod as it was in real life pretty much Getting the mass charge, I'm gonna go for entrenching battalions. Obviously, a little bit quicker to research in terms of um, time because we have the student movement over here. Student mobilization, sorry. And that's going to increase our soft attack for support battalions, which is gonna be excellent for artillery. And it's also going to increase max entrenchment. This is a pretty much a recurring theme. There's a lot of things that increase max entrenchment. As you may expect, since this is World War One now, gotten the communication system, probably need to go for the military hospital as quickly as humanly possible. And then we also have a national focus. We could go for some things down here, but right now it's really not that important. We're going to go for the industrial effort. We also have an extra military factory. We could go for some airships or scouts. Scouts aren't really that useful in terms of planes. Um, they have basically nothing in terms of everything except the air superiority. They have a teeny tiny bit of air superiority, but we right now don't need any scouts, especially because we don't have any way to deploy them. We don't have any airfields, and I don't really want to build any. I could go for some armored cars, but I feel like right now the most important thing to get is going to be the support equipment, uh, especially because we don't have any aluminum production. So we're going to need to get some of that as quickly as possible. However, right now we don't really have that many civilian factories. We could actually spare one to get some aluminum. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to get that from Austria-Hungary, which is not optimal. <laughs> it's not going to be very optimal soon enough. Um, so we do have enough field guns to actually equip our army with them. It's going to be great. Believe me. Good. And that's also going to make it sure that we're going to need to keep training these guys, I think. No? Okay, never mind. So, we're going to have a few of these. Oh, because they still need support equipment. Right. So, are these guys actually gaining any? No, because they're way too depleted in terms of support equipment. Okay, fine. So let's reassign them to their respective armies. Okay, we can also modify our government again. And we're gonna get... And this is really where it starts to get really weird how they manage to <laughs> make Serbia a little bit overpowered, I think. This guy, Miloš Radul Radulovic, he gives you 20% artillery attack, okay? He's an artillery genius. And then you also have Stepan Stepanovich, who gives you 10% attack and 5% defense. And then Petar Pesic, who gives you 10% attack again. That stacks, I believe. Um, 
which is very, very, very dangerous once you actually get quite a lot of artillery in your army. You can get some ridiculous close, um, sorry, not close, uh, soft attack values for pretty much nothing in terms of um, cost. Because artillery isn't that expensive. We're already producing 2.5 field guns a day. But, oh well. And especially it's really good for Serbia because we lack manpower. Like, seriously, we lack a lot of manpower. In fact, what I'm going to do is also... We need to disband these free guys. Because that's going to give us some extra manpower, which is going to go right back into the troops. Some of our troops are actually undermanned. And it's also going to uh, give us some stockpile of support equipment. Battle of the Cheek. The Albanians have scored a su upset victory over Turkish forces to get today. After a surprise attack on a much numer numerically superior force of the Ottomans, the Albanians lured the pursuing Turks into the nearby town of Tuzi, where, joined by rebels from Montenegro, they overwhelmed the bottlenecked forces into a retreat. The Turkish authority in the Balkans have fallen into further question as a result. So I'm reading these because they're kind of relevant to us as we are close to them. We anti Italian policy. Yeah, there's going to be a war between Italy and the Ottoman Empire over Libya, but yeah, we're going to see that soon. So we got some industrial effort, going to get some infrastructure. That's going to be particularly great for us because the terrain around here is very pathetic. Lots of hills, lots of mountains, so having some extra infrastructure is going to be very useful. And it's going to be pretty much a focus for us. So everyone except the cavalry division right now needs to get a little bit of training going. Again, I want my guys to be at regular level before I uh, get into any conflict. And before I can add some extra field guns to my armies, I'm going to need to have quite a few more than I had last time. Right now I seem to have 17 infantry divisions, which is fairly okay. And then... Yeah, okay. So 17 infantry divisions, right? Okay. Which means that for 36, I believe, field guns, yeah, 36 field guns a piece is going to need 360. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's going to need a lot. Yeah. We're quite far away from that. We're getting quite a lot of infantry equipment production, which means that soon enough we can actually stop that and switch to something else. Probably armored cars. Okay. So what is actually Bulgaria doing? Because that's pretty important. Uh, they're reinforcing the navy. That's not very useful for us. They have taken the anti-Ottoman policy, but soon enough, um, the Italo-Turkish war is going to... Yeah. Um, it's going to unlock the... Okay, let's actually go for new surgical instruments. No, actually, that's not really that good right now. We could go for mountain troops. Yeah, mountain troops is going to be pretty good. And then I'm going to go for armament. Yeah, the Italo-Turkish War is going to uh, unlock the national focuses for both me and the uh, Bulgarians to get the Balkan League going and also to attack the Ottoman Empire which is going to be great. Uh, gonna get some more artillery. The Ottomans seem to have a lot of troops over here which is weird. There goes Mexico. There's going to be more things actually happening in Mexico, though. This is not the end. <laughs> Mexico is always full of surprises. wonder what Austria-Hungary is doing. Oh, they're doing anti-Russian policy. Agadir Crisis. This is about Morocco. You can read it if you want. Pretty interesting stuff. I feel like the events in general are very well made in this mod. Uh, they do get quite um, quite a lot of historically things, historically important things uh, in the game, which is, well, 
uh, seems to have been the focus of the mod team to be quite historical. Uh, they've gone less towards the sandbox side of Hearts of Iron 4 and more towards the historical side, which has its uh, problems, but it's also got its you know, strong points as a approach in general. <laughs> the Mona Lisa has been stolen. That poor painting has gone through quite a lot of shitty stuff. Oh, there's quite a lot of trenches over here. Analysis for Lorraine. That's weird. Okay, armament effort. We can probably go for the second one soon enough. Actually, no, that's 1913. So we're going to go for some construction effort. Right, we can also get armored cars. We're going to need oil for that, unfortunately. It's going to be a problem. Gonna get trenches in construction all pretty much all around. So we got the entrenching battalions. Then we have our first choice between mobile defense and static defense. Static defense is gonna give us the machine gun team, which is going to increase the hard attack of our troops. Uh, not really that useful. Uh, pretty decently useful. Uh, the AI does use tanks and armored cars way more than you may imagine, but I still feel like the soft attack is gonna be far and above the superior choice. Oh yeah, right. Um, the secondary. Whoa, oh yeah, right, uh, the Chinese Civil War is happening. You can definitely read this if you want. I highly suggest you actually get uh, reading some more extensive material on the Xinhai Revolution, though, uh, in China, because it's very, very interesting if you're interested in that type of stuff. 